the Columbia Workshop under the direction of Irving Reese. Ladies and gentlemen, the Columbia Workshop offers its 15th program in a series devoted to experimental radio. Some two months ago, we offered you on the workshop a radio version of the first two acts of Hamlet by William Shakespeare. The response from our listening audience was instantaneous and highly flattering. So much so that tonight we go on to finish the play. If you enjoy the drama, if you believe after tonight's performance that Shakespeare should become a regular feature on radio, write to us and say so. We are eager to have this gauge of radio public opinion. Tonight's version of Hamlet, like that of some weeks ago, is the work of Orson Welles, who also plays the role of Hamlet. And now we take pleasure in introducing to you in person, Mr. Orson Welles. In our previous broadcast, we concerned ourselves with establishing the causes that led to Hamlet's tragedy. In especial, the revelation by the ghost of his father's murder, by Hamlet's own uncle, who is now the King of Denmark. This, and the knowledge that his mother had remarried immediately, has left Hamlet a creature mad for revenge. Assuming, as he calls it, an antic disposition, Hamlet plots to trap the king into an open confession of guilt. The arrival of strolling players at the court has provided the necessary means. Hamlet arranges that a performance be given, duplicating the circumstance of his father's death. The play's the thing, wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king. The play's the thing, wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king. It is the night of the play. The hall of the castle has been arranged for the performance. And in a moment, the court will assemble. The blare of trumpets will announce the arrival of the king and queen with Polonius, the king's counselor, and his daughter, Ophelia. In a moment, this play of Hamlet's contriving will begin. But now, for an instant, we find him giving some last-minute advice to the players. Speak the speech, I pray you, as I pronounced it to you, tripping me on the tongue. But if you mouth it, as many of our players do... I had at least the town crier spoke my life. Now do not saw the air too much with your hands, brother. But use all gently. I warrant your honor. Oh, be not too tame, neither, but let your own discretion be your tutor. Oh, there be players that I have seen play, but neither having the accent of Christians, nor the gait of Christian, pagan, nor man, have so strutted and bellowed that I have thought some of nature's journeymen had made men and not made them well. They imitated humanity so abominably. <laughs> I hope we have in reformed that indifferently with us, sir. Oh, reform it altogether. <laughs> Go, you make ready. Horatio. Yes, sweet lord. At your service. There is a play tonight before the king. One scene of it comes near the circumstance which I have told thee of my father's death. Observe, mine uncle. Well, my lord. Well, he's coming to the play. Get your play. <laughs> your Majesty. How fares our cousin Hamlet? Excellent to face of the chameleon's dish. I hear promise crams. You cannot see capon, so. I have nothing but this answer, Hamlet. These words are not mine. No, nor mine now. Uh, Polonius, are the players ready? Aye, my lord. They stay upon your patience. Uh, sit you there, Ophelia. <laughs> Fair Ophelia. You are merry, my lord. What should a man do but be merry? For look you, how cheerfully my mother looked. And my father died within these two hours. Nay, it is twice two months, my lord. Too long. <laughs> ah, we shall know by these fellows. For us and for our tragedy, here stooping to your clemency, we beg your hearing patiently. <laughs> Full thirty years times hath Phoebus cast on round Neptune's salt wash, and Hellas orbit ground. Since love our hearts and Hymen did our hands, unite to mutual in most sacred stand. So many journeys may the sun and moon make us again count over. Their love be done. Faith, I must leave thee, love. And shortly, too, my utterance powers their functions leave to do. And thou shalt live. Oh, confound the rest! Such love must needs be treason in my breast. And second husband, let me be a curse. 
None read the second, but who killed the first. Wormwood, wormwood. So think thou wilt no second husband wed, but die thy thoughts when thy first lord is dead. Both here and hence pursue me lasting strife. If once a widow, ever I be wed. Tis deeply sworn, sweet. Believe me here a while. My spirits grow dull, and fain I would beguile the tedious day with sleep. Sleep rocks thy brain, and never come this chance between us twain. Madam, how like you this play? The lady does protest too much, we think. Oh, she'll keep her word. What do you call the play? The Mousetrap. Mary Howe, tropically, this play is the image of a murder done in Vienna. Thoughts, black, hands, apps, drugs, fit, and tired. This one is Luciana's nephew to the king, you see. He poisons him in the garden for the state. His name's Gonzago. The story is extended, written choice Italian. You shall see anon how the murderer gets the love of Gonzago's wife. Give all the pay! What? Write it with false fire! Why? Go weep! The heart on solid play! Of some must watch, while some must sleep! So runs the world away! It is now the very witching time of night when churchyards yawn and hell itself breathes out contagion to this world. Now could I drink hot blood and do such bitter business as the day would quake to look on. But how to my mother? The realization that his crime has been reenacted before the entire court under the guise of an evening's entertainment has completely unnerved the king. He sees there can be no peace for him while Hamlet remains in Denmark. So in a desperate mood, he arranges that Hamlet shall be sent to England and secretly put to death. In his chamber, the king, torn by conscience, attempts to pray. Hamlet, passing on his way to the queen's apartment, observes the kneeling figure. Now might I do it, Pat? Now he's praying. Oh, my offense is rank. It smells to heaven. It hath the primal eldest curse upon it. A brother's murder. Oh, what form of prayer can serve my turn? Help, angels, make us say. Bow stubborn knees. All may be well. And now I'll do it. So he goes to heaven. So am I revenged? Oh, this is higher than salary, not revenge. He took my father grossly full of bread, with all his crimes, broad flown, as flush as may. Am I then revenged to take him in the purging of his soul when he is fit and seasoned for his passage? No. Absorbed. And know thou a more hurried bent. When he is drunk, asleep, or in his rage, at gaming, swearing, or about some act that hath no relish of salvation in it, then trip him, that his heels may kick at heaven, and that his soul may be as damned as black as hell, where to it goes. My mother stays. In good turn to you. Who's there? Polonius. Hamlet is coming straight. Now look, you lay home to him. Tell him his friends have been too broad Mother! to bear him. Mother! I hear him coming. I'll hide behind this heiress. I'll convey myself to hear the process. Now, Mother! What's the matter? Hamlet, thou hast thy father much offended. Mother, you have my father much offended. Why, how now, Hamlet? Have you forgotten me? No, by the rude, not so. You are the queen. Your husband, brother's wife. Would it were not so? You are my mother. Nay, then I'll set those to you that can speak. Come, come and sit you down to the fudge. You go not till I set you up a glass where you may see the inmost part of you. What will that do? That will not matter me. Help! Help! Oh, help, help! How oh, now? A rat? Dead for a ducket! Oh, I am slain. Oh, 
Only what has that done? Nay, I know not. It's the king. Oh, what a rash and bloody deed is this. A bloody deed? Almost as bad, good mother, as kill a king and marry with his brother. Kill a king? Aye, lady. Twas my word. Polonius. Thou wretched rash, intruding fool. Farewell. I took thee for thy better. Oh, me. Leave wringing of your hands. Please sit you down and let me wring your heart. Or so I shall if it be made a penetrable stuff. If damned custom of not brass is so that it be proof and bulwark against sense. What have I done? That thou dost wag thy tongue and noise the road against me. Such an act that blurs the grace and blush of modesty, calls virtue hypocrite, takes off the rose from the fair forehead of an innocent love, and sets a blister there. I me what act that roars so loud and thunders in the index. Look here. Upon this picture, and on this, oh. the counterfeit presentment of two brothers. The... What a grace was seated on this brow. Oh. Hyperion's curls. The front of Jove himself. An eye like Mars to threaten and command. A station like the Herald Mercury, new lighted on a heaven-kissing hill. This was your husband. <laughs> Look you now. What follows. Here is your husband. Like a mildewed ear. Blasting his wholesome brother. <laughs> Have you eyes? Could you on this fair mountain leave to feed and batten on this moor? <laughs> huh? Have you eyes? You cannot call it love. For at your age, the hate and the blood is tame, it's humble. But it waits upon the judgment. And what judgment would step from this to this? Oh, Hamlet, speak no more. Thou turnest mine eyes into my very soul. And there I see such black and grained spots as will not leave their teeth. A murderer and a villain, a slave that is not twentieth part the tithe of your preceding lord, <laughs> a king of shreds and patches. Save me and hover on me with your wings, you heavenly gods. What would your gracious figure? He's mad. Do you not come, your tardy son, to chide? Alas, how is it with you that you do bend your eye on vacancy? Why, look you there. Look how it steals away. My father, in his heaven, he lived. Look where he goes, even now. Out of the portal! This is the very coinage of your brain! Mother, for love of grace, lay not that flattering unction to your soul. But not your trespass, but my madness speaks. It will but skin and fill the ulcerous place, while frank corruption, mining all within, infects unseen. Confess yourself to heaven. Oh, Hamlet. Thou hast cleft my heart. In twain. Oh, throw away the worser part of it and live the purer with the other half. Good night. But go not to my uncle's bed. Assume a virtue if you have it not. And when you are desirous to be blessed, I'll bless him, baby. Good night. I must be cruel. Only to be kind. Be thou assured, if words be made of breath and breath of life, I have no life to breathe what thou hast said to me. I must to England. You know that. Alack, I had forgot. Just so concluded on. Good night. Thus, Hamlet leaves his mother, hoping his words have had the desired effect. But the queen, after her son's converse with an unseen spirit, is now more convinced than ever that Hamlet is mad. She reports her conclusions to the king, 
who speedily commands that Hamlet shall leave at once for England. And so Hamlet is banished from Denmark. But the feast for which the king has prayed is not to come. The murder of Polonius proves the mainspring of greater and more tragic events. The rest of her father, Ophelia, goes insane. The Danish people are stirred almost to rebellion. And finally, with the return of Laertes, the son of Polonius, they are provided with a necessary leader. Now the rabble has risen, and led by Laertes, storms the castle in which the king and queen have secluded themselves. Suddenly the doors break open, and Laertes appears at the head of the mob. Where is the king? Send you all without power. I pray you, give me leave. Keep the door. Oh, thou vile king, give me my father. Tell me, Laertes, why thou art thus intense? Let him go, Gertrude. Speak, man. Where is my father? Dead. But not by him. How came he dead? I'll not be juggled with. I am guiltless of your father's death. The chalice level to your judgment, dear, has saved us to your rye. Oh, no. What noise is that? Where is the beauteous majesty of Denmark? How do you, pretty lady? Well, Goddard. Ha! They say the owl was a baker's daughter. <laughs> oh, will he dry up my brain? Here's seven times salt to burn out the sense and virtue of mine eyes. Dear maid... Kind sister, sweet Ophelia. Oh, heaven, is it possible a young maid's wit should be as mortal as an old man's life? Well, there's Ruth, Miss. That's for remembrance. There's Ruth for you, and here's some for me. Ah, we may call it air with grace for Sunday. Oh, you must wear your rule with a difference. I would give you some violets. But they withered all when my father died. God have mercy on his soul. And on all good Christian souls, I pray God. God be with you. Oh. 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 And so Ophelia, before her brother's eyes, drifts from the castle to die. A suicide by drowning. Meantime, Hamlet, unaware of what has happened in his absence, has managed to escape the king's plot to have him murdered and has secretly returned to Denmark. We find him once more with Horatio in a churchyard. I Nearby, a grave digger sings at his work. I was very pleased to contract the time for our mighty soul, whom he thought was happy. Has this fellow no feeling of his business, but Horatio, he with his things of grave making? Custom that I made it in him the property of easiness. I would speak to this fellow. And ship it me. Whose grave is this, sir? Mine, sir. For pit of clay uh, for to be made. I think it be thine indeed, for thou liest in it. And you lie out on, sir, therefore it is not yours. For my part, I do not lie in it, and yet it is mine. What man dost thou dig it for? For no man, sir. What woman, then? For none, neither. Who's to be buried in? One that was a woman, but rest her soul, she's dead. How absolute for nay, this Horatio. How long hast thou been a grave maker? Of all the days of the year, I came to it that day our last King Hamlet overcame Fortinbras. How long is that since? Can it you tell that? Every fool can tell that. It was the very day young Hamlet was born. He that's mad and sent into England. Aye, Mary. Why was he sent into England? Because he was mad. He shall recover his wits there. <laughs> or if he do not, there's no great matter there. There the men are as mad as he. How long will a man lie in the earth, Harry Rod? Faith, hey, sir, if he be not rotten before he die, he lasts you some eight or nine years. Here's a skull now. This skull have lain in the earth three and twenty years. Whose was it? A horse of mad fellows it was. This same skull, sir, was Yorick's skull, the king's jester. This? Even that. Let me see. Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio. A fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. He hath borne me on his back a thousand times. And now, 
how horrid in my imagination it is. <laughs> Where be your jibes now? Your gambles, songs, your flashes of merriment that were wont to set the table on a roar. Prithee, Horatio, tell me one thing. What's that, my lord? Dost thou think Alexander looked to this fashion in the earth? In, sir. And smelt so? To what base uses may we return, Horatio? Look at softer side. Here comes the king. The queen, the courtiers. Who is this they follow? Couch we a while and mark. What ceremony else? That is Laertes, a very noble youth. What ceremony else? Must there no more be done? No more be done. We should profane the service of the dead to sing a requiem and such rest to her as to peace parted souls. Nay, had it yet. I tell thee, churlish priest, a ministering angel shall my sister be when thou liest howling. What? The fair Ophelia? Sweet to the sweet. Farewell. I hope thou shouldst have been my Hamlet, wife. I thought thy bride bed to have death, sweet men, and not have strewed thy grave. Hold off the earth a while, till I have caught her once more in my arms. What is he whose grief bears such an emphasis? This is I, Hamlet, the day! Oh, oh, the devil take thy soul! Thunder. I loved Ophelia! Forty thousand brothers could not with all their quantity of love make up my sum. Dost thou come here to whine, to outface me with leaping in her grave? Oh, he is mad, Laertes. For love of God, spare him! Say it. What is the reason that you use me thus? I loved you ever, but it's no matter. Let Hercules himself do what he may. The cat will mew, and dog will have his day. Now Laertes, determined to be revenged, finds an ally in the king. Thus the latter arranges that Hamlet and Laertes shall duel, ostensibly for sport. The contest is treacherously conceived. Laertes' rapier bears an envenomed point, and if this fails, the king has prepared a poisoned drink to ensure the death of Hamlet. My lord, his majesty sends to know if your pleasure hold to play with Laertes. I am constant to my purposes. The king and queen are all coming down. You will lose this wager. I do not think so. But thou wouldst not think how ill it's all here about my heart. No matter. If your mind is like anything, obey it. I will forestall the repair hither and say you are not fit. Oh, not of wit. We defy augury. There's a special providence in the fall of a sparrow. If it be not now, it is not to come. If it be not to come, it will be now. If it be not now, yet it will come. The readiness is all. <laughs> Come, Hamlet. Come and take this hand from me. Give them the foil. You know the wager. Very well, my lord. Set me the stoops of wine upon that table. The king shall drink to Hamlet's better breath. Come. Begin. Come on, sir. Come, my lord. <laughs> what? No. A hit. A very palpable hit. Stay. Give me drink. Hamlet, here's to thy help. Give him the cup. I'll pay this bout first. Steady by a while. Come! Another hit! A tail! A touch! A touch! I do confess! The queen carouses to thy fortune, Hamlet. Just but do not drink! I will, my lord. I pray you pardon me. Tis the poison cup that is too late. Come for the third layer that you would dally. I pray you pass me your best fire. How about you now? Ah. A touch for the arty! Hey, come again! Look, they have changed rapiers! Oh. Look to the queen there! Ho! Oh. Oh, I the queen! She swoons to see them! Please! No! No, the drink! The drink! I am poisoned! Oh, villainy! Let the doors be locked! Treachery! Seek it out! It is here, Hamlet! Hamlet, thou art slain! And the treacherous instrument is in thy hand, unpated and envenomed! 
thy mother's poison. I can no more. The king, the king's to blame. The point in venom too. Then venom to thy work. Oh, oh yet defend me, friend. Here, thou incestuous, murderous, damned dame. Drink off this potion. Follow my mother. <laughs> You, that look pale and tremble at this chance, that are but mutes or audience to this act, had I but time, oh, I could tell you, but let it be. I die, Horatio. Thou livest. Report me in my cause, a right to the unsatisfied. Never believe it. I am more an antique Roman than a Dane. Here's yet some little left. As thou a man, give me the cup. Let no, go. No, no, I haven't. I... Oh, oh, good Horatio. What a wounded man. Things standing thus unknown shall live behind me. If thou didst ever hold me in thy heart. Oh. Had sent thee from felicity a while, and in this harsh world, draw thy breath in pain to tell my story. The rest is silence. <laughs> now, cracks a noble heart. Good night, sweet prince, and flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. So ends the tragedy of Hamlet, Prince of Denmark. Again, may we say that if you enjoy this presentation, if you are convinced that the tragedies and comedies of Shakespeare have a place on the air and should become a permanent radio feature, write to us. Help give us this gauge of public opinion. Tonight's cast included Miss Frank Hale, Miss Laura Straub, Miss Virginia Wells, Mr. Whitford Kane, Sidney Smith, Joseph Cotton, Shirley Oliver, Santos Ortega, George Duthie, Edgerton Paul, and Hiram Sherman. The narrator was Edward Jerome. Next week, the workshop will present a special demonstration in conjunction with the meeting of the New York Electrical Society. Dr. E.E. E. Free will have charge of the demonstration. Tonight's presentation of Hamlet was arranged and produced by Orson Welles. In the absence of Mr. Reese, Brewster Morgan assisted. The Columbia Workshop's presentations are conceived and directed by Irving Reese. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.